PhDs, CDTs, DTPs, NERC. What does it all mean? Do you want to get a PhD in the UK, but haven't got a clue how to get one? Well, that was me a year ago. So don't worry, I'm going to break it all down for you. Nice and digestible. Mm -hmm. The process of applying to a PhD in the UK is so much more complicated and convoluted than applying to a undergraduate programme. There's quite a lot of hoops to jump through, boxes to tick, unspoken rules that as a first generation student can be quite difficult to untangle. The process felt pretty impossible to navigate. That's why I wanted to create this video for potential incoming PhD students to hopefully make the process a bit more manageable. Please note, this video is mainly for funded PhDs in the UK, especially around STEM subjects. By this point, I'm already assuming you have thought through the reasons why you want to do a PhD. Make sure they're the right reasons. If you're still unsure whether a PhD is right for you, watch out for a later video where I talk through the pros and cons of doing a PhD. So let's jump right in. Let's start by breaking down some of those acronyms. A PhD stands for Doctor of Philosophy and it's the highest degree one could achieve in a university. Typically, it involves in-depth research into a specific area. A PhD can be completed in nearly every subject, not just philosophy as the name suggests. A person who completes a PhD will gain the title of doctor at the end. Again, different to a medical doctor. A candidate must have at least an undergraduate degree and usually a master's is preferred. A doctoral training partnership or centre for doctoral training, aka CDT or DTP, are multi-institutional schemes that fund PhD projects. They are designed to support the next generation of researchers. Typically, it's a partnership between multiple institutes. This might include universities or industrial partners. DTPs usually offer hundreds of different projects across a massive scope of different fields. Funding is usually competitive and so the application process can be very hard. There are numerous stages to the application process which we'll go through later on in the video. If you do secure a DTP, it's usually fully funded including tuition fees, stipend and any other research costs that you might need. The funding for a DTP usually comes from a research council. So for example, my project is funded by NERC, the Natural Environment Research Council. However, there are multiple different research councils for each field. Projects usually get released around this time of year, October, November. I will include a list of this year's DTPs in the description. Deadlines are usually scattered between the end of December and the end of January. Please check because each DTP has a different deadline. However, a DTP is not the only way to find a project and so deadlines could be scattered throughout the whole year. You really should try and find a funded PhD. Self-funding can be very difficult and stressful, especially if you have taken out another loan or if you have to work part-time. Gaining a scholarship is the best way to do a PhD because you're fully supported and you also have a very nice network of other academics and other students that you can collaborate with. Hopefully that breaks down some of the jargon. Now let's look at where you can find a PhD. There are a number of ways that you can find a PhD in the UK. As I've already mentioned, a DTP is a very common and increasingly preferable way to secure a PhD. Here is a list of all the NERC DTPs that are running this year. There are numerous sites like findaphd.com that include projects from loads of different institutes and loads of different supervisors that potentially will be independently funded. Get into contact with other academics, potentially that you've worked with before or that you want to work with in the future, to see if they have any projects in the pipeline. Twitter is also a great resource to find a PhD or a postdoc position. University websites are a great source for PhD programs. They'll usually have a postgraduate section on the website and will include a list of projects that are available. A quick word on funding, DTPs have funding attached to them, but this isn't the case for every PhD project. Other projects might be externally funded, so for example through a grant that a professor has secured, or through a company. And if funding isn't attached to the project that you want to do, there are potential grants and external scholarships which you can then apply to and attach to the PhD project yourself. Usually all the relevant information can be found on the university's website so make sure to check it. Okay, you found the PhD that you want to do, how do you apply? I'd start off with emailing the supervisor. 
This isn't a written rule in an application process, but I think introducing yourself and asking those burning questions before you submit the application can be really beneficial and make you stand out. I'd recommend emailing the professors in October or November when the projects come out. I'll include an example of a email that I sent to my supervisors when I was applying to PhDs. Sometimes supervisors want an informal chat with you to help you prep for interviews and to discuss the project generally. Usually a supervisor will tell you if you're suited to the project or not. After you've made a connection with the professor, it's time to get your application documents sorted. Firstly, check the guidelines on the university website or the DTP that you're applying to. Most of the time, they will provide you with an in-depth guide to how to apply. You'll need to gather relevant documents together, including your CV, your transcript, your university certificate, as well as a personal statement that is written specifically for that project. You don't want to include a general personal statement. Make sure you're tailoring it to the specific project you're applying to. A top tip is that before submitting your documents, get it checked over and get feedback from other academics. Okay, you've submitted all your documents and you've got an interview. Hooray! Or you've not. Sorry about that. My experience in interviews have only been through the doctoral training partnerships, so I'll discuss the process. In a lot of DTPs, there are two rounds of interviews. The first is with the supervisors, where they choose a candidate to put forward for the specific project. The second round of interviews is at a DTP level and projects are then competing against each other. Hence why it's so competitive. Some might rank the candidates, some might rank the projects. However, each DTP works slightly differently. Again, you should get told what the process is. Good ways to prepare for an interview are to read around your project area, read up on your supervisors to make sure you know what their background is and what their area is, and practicing lots of interview questions. I'll include a link to some common PhD questions below so you can practice. Okay, you've completed the interview and now you sit and wait. A rule of thumb is that you usually get contacted fairly quickly if you have secured a position. This isn't always the case, but in my experience, this is what happened. Most research councils will have a universal acceptance deadline, which is a deadline where you can accept or reject a project. This is to help students that might have multiple different acceptances. I'm going to finish with some things that you wouldn't know unless someone told you. These were the things that I struggled with the most because they weren't written rules and they were things that I had to figure out the hard way. Firstly, rejection is not a reflection of your ability. There are so many different factors that determine whether you secure a PhD or not and a lot of them are not to do with your skill or talent. So don't feel disheartened if you don't secure a PhD right away. Apply to lots of projects. Professors will know that if you're serious about securing a PhD, you will apply widely. And it's okay to tell them that. Some professors will already have students in mind for the projects. Networking is one of the most important things in academia. Even though on paper, they might seem to go through the application process, they might have already chosen a candidate. Finally, it's okay to show your passion and it's really great to because PhD students have to have a lot of passion for their topic. So don't be afraid to show some personality in your applications. And hopefully, after all of that, you have secured a project. Woohoo! Also remember that everyone's application process is different. I know students that applied to one project and secured that project. Yeah, I applied to 25 and only secured one. It is so variable and that's why it's very difficult to give specific guidelines. I really hope that's helped you. Good luck with your applications. If you have any more burning questions, please pop them down in the comments and I'll try my best to reply. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. It helps me out a lot. And I invite you to explore my other academic pages, such as my Instagram and Twitter. I bid you good luck into the world of PhD applications.